Well, all right, we're on the Queen Mary. We're on the Queen Mary. I'm not sure exactly which deck we're on. What is B deck. B deck. Have you been uh, a forward to see the Thank former you, third class areas? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the well, Coronia. You room. can only. S oh, that's all locked off. Yeah. Well, you can only get into the uh, stairwell. And that's one of the watershed moments of my life, seeing who decided to adventure for the first time. I was it sitting in that theater? It was a big, big theater. Like the first week it was out, maybe even the first day, and all in the curtains, you know, slowly open, you know, and all of a sudden here comes this intro music by John Williams, I believe. Yep. Just these aerial shots of this miniature. Of the bottle going through. It just gives me goosebumps even today to think about it. You know, it, it had such an effect on me. Well, it really was a great film. Like I said last night, it was the first I saw it. So all this, of course, is the original, all this beautiful quarter cut oak. Just look at that tiger ribbing. It's just beautiful. It's just like Olympic. It's, that's the forecastle out there, actually. Yeah. Going out onto the forecastle of oh, the Queen was... Mary. Oh, gosh. Forgot my sunglasses. Here we go. Oh, nice wrinkle. Amazing to think that one of these was recovered from Titanic's debris field with the actual compass card uh, in the glass with the oil that's, that's in there intact. See all the compass bearings on it. Now if you look at uh, movies of Queen Mary in service in the 50s in particular, you can find them on YouTube. And these were not painted black, they were painted sort of an anti-fouling red the gutters, the waterways here, which is interesting. Huh. And then the, you know, the, the artist slash historian in me wants to get down there with a razor blade, pick and pick and see, see if that red yeah. is still there. Yeah, I got to find that original in service, go all the way back to the maiden voyage and see what color it might have been then. You know, like Titanic, was it gray? Was it black? Was it maybe, maybe the, uh, the masked brown? scale is just so vast that you, you hardly even get any, you know, stereo separation with our little measly human eyes. <laughs> it's just so big and so distant, even just from here to the bridge, the face of the bridge. So I just uh, noticed these, these drains here. Um, the Titanic wreck video from the various you know expeditions that have been out there. On some of them, they get close enough to the uh, to the corners of the officers' quarters roof, right by the expansion joint, and on the aft end of the officers' quarters roof, right before the the uh, raise up over the first class staircase area. There are two little drains like this on either side, but they're they're a lot smaller they're very than small, this. Yeah, yeah they're, I don't know, maybe like this. But it's just reminiscent to see that. You just think, God, oh, yeah. Except this doesn't look like it's brass. It looks like it might be iron. On Titanic, I believe they're brass. Yeah, you get that first-hand experience, that ambiance, the lighting. Exactly. The sounds as you're walking through the corridors, paneled in wood. It's, it's just absolutely very right. reminiscent. When you think of this ship was you know, designed and built just 20 years, basically, after Titanic. The original lights, actually, you can see where they were fitted in a lot of cases. And these are first-class stateroom lights, you know, sort of so-so reproductions. Uh, the lights that were originally here in the corridors were just bare uh, tubes, but they were incandescent. They look like fluorescent, but they're actually incandescent tubes. Were they covered in any kind of case? I don't believe so. Oh, really? Yeah, these, these are sort of copies of, of what was in the first class staterooms and suites but not not in the corridors right so there's a lot of mixing and matching and changes that have gone on over the years all right like carpeting for example i mean the corridors had no carpeting whatsoever in right. service but you have to do that for a hotel because it muffles the footsteps sure, sure. when people are sleeping yeah. yeah so another one of those changes now here's a 
Here's an older, unchanged light here in this in this cross corridor here. And look at the color of this. This is what I mean about this, this sickening daylight tube in here. It's just, look at how green the wood looks underneath it. Ugh. Are you filming us? No. <laughs> this is, I'm not filming us. <laughs> See, you can you can really see the shear here on the Queen Mary, but we're in the middle here. of the we're valley, right. so it's hard to notice. Did, did, and my did. head's in the way. <laughs> All yeah, right. You gotta go at the, at totally at the end of the corridor and then look look aft, and you can mm -hmm. really see. Yes, it. You absolutely. Put it on the telephoto, and that it's really weird. shows it. It's interesting to think that on the maiden voyage, Queen Mary didn't have the handrails along the side because they thought that the ship would be so steady that she wouldn't need it. But she ended up being quite a roller. So handrails were quickly installed. Well, that has the same low sticker over there. There's some numbers there. That has the same sticker as the chairs. Yeah, but that's because they thought it was from the Queen Mary. <laughs> Maybe it's from the media or Ivernia. Thank you. Are these original chairs? I'm loving their design. Is that correct? I don't think so. They could be, but I <coughs> don't think so. I mean, they got, they're very well Art Deco-y done. Yeah. Uh, not, too, not too over the top, just, just the right amount of Art Deco. Yeah. The wood looks pretty new. See here where it's been? Well, it has the... Um, foundation logo on it. 1997 to 99. Well, maybe it's an inventory, to, maybe it's an actual artifact. Bill might know, but Bill will know. Or the I'll wizard, Bill the will wizard know. will know. The wizard will know. When a ship goes to sea for the first time, she captures her society. In other words, when the Queen Mary was new, she was Britain 1936. She was class-oriented, she had a particular style, she had a particular demeanor, and that was British upper-class pre-war. The difficulty with a ship is they become time capsules in a way that is not good. After the war, society was turned over. Uh, class distinctions were far less important, and the world was not living in the posh nobility of 1936, you had a sort of scrappy realism of shortages, of labor unrest, of dislocated people. And the Queen Mary did not quite fit that world anymore. So Kennard came in and they started making changes. Uh, they made third class a lot more comfortable. They made second class more attractive. Uh, and very often it's at the expense of first class, little nibbles, we need this lounge, we need that deck space. Uh, first class continued in a grand way, but not really in the epic way from the 30s. Finally, by the time the 60s came around, again, society had changed once more. Cruising was the mainstay and the Queen Mary just is not a cruise ship. That's what sealed her fate. Too big to fit into the popular ports and no air conditioning and limited private baths. That wasn't going to fly in 1965. So the ship had to be decommissioned. She wound up in Long Beach and Long Beach actually kept a lot of the showstopper rooms, like the first class lounge, the first class uh, smoking room, and the cocktail bar, the observation bar. That's still there. And, you know, if you close your eyes, you can really imagine being back in time, uh, watching the doors and hoping Fred Astaire might pop in for a highball or something like that. This is gorgeous. These, by the way, are 
original. Are they? They go all the way back. Still functional, I hope? I don't know. One of, the, one of the first ships to be outfitted with this kind of sprinkler system throughout. Distribution box GQ3 from section box GR and G switchboard room. Radi radiator and towel rail A, B, C, D, cabin 61 and 63 and 65. And these have all been relabeled in yeah. these cabins too. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can see where the originals were. Mm -hmm. But these are, these are originals. No lights will come yeah. on, you know. And I, I need my steward. This is the, 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 uh, yeah. What is that? Yeah, yeah, just you can see there's a the metal Oh, cool. Yeah. And the original steelwork is red. Somewhere on the ship, I think there might still be one or two, but uh, uh, these used to be like Bakelite inserts oh, mm -hmm. and they said I'm trying to remember what they say ash ash ends not a yeah I, think might I, have... I, I saw one okay yeah they're yeah. still around I was mm -hmm. thinking it's not ash trays but ash ends mm -hmm. I think that's it yeah they're, they're cigarette ends mm -hmm. they're so not butts cigarette ends. ends I think that's There's the real one word. forward yes. yeah mm -hmm. yeah no. wait they just is that what they do mm -hmm. it's not like an actual tray oh man I, I don't understand English Oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. This is what used to be original linoleum here. And you could see the deck. You can see right here on the stairs. The deck was called out, you know, in the linoleum. It was inset. Now maybe maybe on the next level. This is absolutely original linoleum here for sure. Original light fixtures with their bottoms all removed, probably so that they could change the uh, fluorescent lights that are in there. This is the bane of my existence looking at fluorescent lights inside Queen Mary. It's just a ghastly light, but at least they're not daylight bulbs, you know, daylight tubes. These are sort of a soft white. So let's go up to the top level here. Here's a cigarette ends thing. It's missing the thing in the middle here. There you go, that's original right there. There's the first class smoking room right there. Through that door. And the bathroom. So this has all been redone here. Because just a few months ago, this was the, an absolutely original restroom in here with the with the tile. Wow. Yeah. See, this will be this will be original tile here. So the the women during during he, uh, heavy seas, they'd be wearing their high heels. And you'll notice all this collection of pock marks in the tile in the corners because when, when the uh, weather would get really rough, they would be hanging on to the railings here and their weight would shift on and off their high heels and eventually, you know, dig into the tile. But you'll see this in, you know, in corners. You won't see it in the main walkway because they wouldn't be walking here. They'd be hanging on to the, to the rails here and creating this. And there's a couple of telephone booths up near the front entrance where, I mean, it's just full of these little pock marks where the women's high heels just dug into the linoleum tile. A long, long disused elevator. It's original wood. Beautiful. Just with things leaning up against it. That's, doesn't that kill you? And look to the lifeboats, red and, red and green. One still left. What were you thinking this was? Oh, this was to the lifeboats? Well, and this is just a red. That's what the, the arrows are for. Yeah, and this would have been. Probably. Okay, that's the sun, guys. 
Really? That's the sun. How's that the sun? Oh, see, see how it it's it's concave from this side? Oh, the sun on the clock. Yeah, this is the you know the, the sun. So maybe the clock is not amidships, you know, maybe it's to the side or something. Say right here. R deck, outside window, outside Windsor room. So this is all new. Oh, okay. You know, since the 70s. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely the sun and that's why there's light in there. If we went down in, into the uh, gigantic dining saloon, we would see the other side. of One of these panels, uh, nobody knows about, but you can open it up and there you're looking right at the back of, uh, you know, the, the uh, like the clock. Mm -hmm. The one in the saloon? In the dining saloon, oh. the main R deck. So we might need to go down one more deck. Down. I'm not All right, so we're trying to find where the panel is for the clock in the saloon. It might be right here, actually. We're on A deck. Ken is hot on the trail. We've been through this one. Before. Yeah, but we didn't open everything. Here, this is the exact center. This is the center line. Yeah, this has to be it. This has to be it. I'm telling you, this is it. <clears throat> It's not gonna. It's not gonna move. Could be. Well, we can't open the, the panels above and see what we are. I mean, like it might. Yeah, maybe the panels at least will give us a clue if we open those up. I'm telling you, that's got to be it, though. This is just the same thing. This is the roof. That doesn't help. This is the roof of the saloon. How about we go inside? Let's climb up there. That has to be it. That absolutely must be the clock panel right there. In, in the midst of you know all this new wiring since the you know early early 70s late 60s here's an old toggle switch there on the left an old ceramic you know it's just sitting there it's obviously I original you wonder what that would have controlled up in the roof in the crawl space oh yeah you can see it clear across the whole the whole room, when you look through the crack there, you see lights surrounding the entire, you know, coving of the ceiling, if you look that way. Look at the distance. All right, so here's a cool thing that we just found, a little secret that I'm sure most people who even work here are unaware of. All right, so come on over here. Let's, uh, let's say we want to close the window. The sound of the shipyard is just terrible. All right, so we close that up. And we latch it like you're supposed to, although on the original ship, there would have been screws on top of this, but I think souvenir hunters took them. One still remains there. But it's still really bright. I don't like this. Well, I'm in luck because there's this little thing right here. Watch this. That's right, and it's filthy, because I bet the hotel doesn't even know it's here. It's got the little finger hole right there. There's another plate right here. This looks like it's on a track too, but this doesn't move. And then over here, the original blind uh, is there too, but this doesn't budge at all. So we've got three things that should move. Only one does, but it's still really cool. And of course, all last night I had it closed just because I wanted to have it closed because it's so cool, but it's also filthy. Like, I'm gonna leave that closed when I check out. And the cleaning lady's gonna come in and have no idea how to open it or even what the dink it is. And she's just gonna look at it and be like, huh. So this is the, the starboard shop. We're up in Piccadilly Circus. And this was originally the drawing room, as you were saying. But what else? Well, this room, the Queen Mary did not have chapels. So in first class, there you see the drawing, the photograph of the drawing room as it looked originally. This panel here, which is in the museum now, is folds back and exposes an altar where they had mass. So mass in first class here. 
In second class, the second class library had the same arrangement. A panel would fold back, expose an altar for mass in second class. There we go. Oh, there's a cross. There's the crucifix. See, in this drawing room, so. Uh, the Church of England stuff was in the library, which is next to it. It's across from it. Right. So, yeah, very nice. Very nice. We're outside of cabin A15, which during the Queen Mary's voyages was cabin A25. They renamed it when they converted the Queen Mary to a hotel. Now, this cabin belonged to Audrey Pearl during the return maiden voyage when the Queen Mary returned back to England for the very first time. Audrey Pearl was a regular passenger on board the Queen Mary and she was pretty significant because when she was three months old, she was on board the RMS Lusitania, which was another Cunard liner, when it was torpedoed and sunk in 1915. She was only three months old. She was traveling on board with her parents, a couple of her siblings, and a couple nannies. She and her parents both survived. I think one brother or sister and her nanny survived. But the family did lose two sisters, I believe, two young sisters and a couple of the nannies were all lost on the sinking of the Lusitania. Surprisingly, she was willing to go back on a Cunard ship, and she chose this one. She was put in this cabin right here. You gotta go down this little side corridor off of A deck, and uh, this is it right here, originally cabin A25. I think it's occupied, so we're not able to go inside. She was a saloon class passenger aboard the Lusitania, and she was in first class here on the Queen Mary. She was also the very last survivor of the RMS Lusitania to pass away, and she passed away in 2011. This is an example of a basic Queen Mary tea set. So you have your teacup right here, you need your bread plate, a waste dish. The waste dish was for spent tea bags or anything like that. So that's new for me. And don't forget your sugar right there. And there are actually two sizes of teapots. This is a smaller size. You have your creamer right there and your hot water jug. So this is like a tea service set for one person because usually you get a teapot and it fits like, it's good for like two or three people. But it's very interesting that this is all just a one person set. That's pretty cool. And this is original China from this ship, of course. Um, I really like the pattern. I actually kind of want to get some for myself. Over here, we've got silver. Most of this silver is also from the Queen Mary, but there's a few surprises in here. Um, for example, well, here we've got a, a soup terrine, and we got a round serving platter with a domed cover. I'm literally reading the labels because I don't know all this stuff all that well, but this, this is a really cool piece because it's actually from the Olympic. Yes, many, um, when Cunard sh was shutting down their warehouses, they had many fittings from the Olympic. They either transferred them to the Queen Mary while she was sailing or locked in storage. And then it was just put on here. So this is Olympic, RMS Olympic. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. Sister ship to the famous RMS Titanic, which most of you know. Now, Cunard and White Star Line were competitors, as, as all of you guys know. But some of you might not know that in the 30s, during the Depression, the British government said, hey, we'll bail you guys out if you merge. So then for a brief period, like through the war, it was Cunard White Star. And therefore, some of the China that was for the White Star Line got merged with the, a dog, sorry, got merged with the Cunard. Uh, China, and then it was just all put into service. Some of them on the same ship, they would have White Star Line stuff, they would have Cunard stuff, and um, then all together. Now here, they've appeared, and this is, this is Queen Mary China, but also Olympic China. Silverware. You know what I'm saying. It's cool. All right, so kosher foods, kosher eating, people who stay kosher, they have to have separate plates because everything has to be clean according to the Torah. And um, here we have the kosher plates, which are kept separate for food that's cooked differently. And um, it's actually quite rare to come across this stuff, but for some reason I've been seeing it everywhere lately, not just here, but like on eBay and things like that, which is pretty cool. But here we've got 
kosher dinner plates, kosher side plates, kosher teapot in the same exact pattern that we just, uh, not teapot, teacup in the same exact pattern that we just saw in the other display case. We got kosher silverware. This whole display case is kosher stuff and that's, that looks like just a picture of the galley. I doubt that's the kosher kitchen. It is the kosher kitchen. It is the kosher kitchen. It is. Thank you. That's a very big kitchen. The Queen Mary also had a synagogue on board, she I believe, did. which was not common at the time. No, the Norman had one and the Queen Mary had one. The Titanic did not, although Titanic and Olympic did also have a kosher service. And there is some kosher um, dishware that still survives from the Olympic. And I think there's been some recovered from the Titanic, maybe. So you can see the kosher menus for the Queen Mary, which is pretty neat. So this is a pretty neat display case we've got going on here. I really have absolutely no idea. Maybe you guys can comment if you do. I have no idea why some of this just says milk. I mean, like, I get it. It's milk on that. Maybe that's a, a creamer. Or maybe that, I don't know. But why is it on plates? What's going on with milk? I mean, we got meat over there. Is it? And there's no, uh, set, there's no third option. That is, that's a pot that just says kosher, no Hebrew. But I guess that's for the cooks because they don't need to see the Hebrew writing. We are. This is a watertight door over here. Legend says that this is one of the most haunted places on board as well because someone was walking through it when the door was closing and the door closed on him and cut him in half. And it was a real accident. The man's name was John Petter. He was recently signed up to the ship. They were closing the watertight doors as a matter of routine. And those doors have a bell that rings in advance before the door moves. And Petter, for whatever reason, and we'll never know why, decided that he was going to chicken the door and, and jump through it. And the door caught him and he was crushed. As I recall, the, the nature of the, the damage, the injury, was from the collarbone across the sternum to about where the liver is. And he was, I, he was not pinched in half, but you know, that's, there was nothing left of that midsection. You're supposed to have two people um, to actually control the door. One holds the handle open, the guy, one, his partner goes through, he holds the, the handle the other side while the other one goes through. Well, this kid tried to do it on his own and he got caught and it, uh, and it completely crushed him. Uh, we had to uh, we had to make room. It was on the way out, so we had to keep the body uh, in our freezer. We actually had to empty out a fruit locker freezer um, and put the body in there. Where was it? Uh, it was on just off of the working alleyway, up in the in the bowels of the ship. Here's a pretty cool direct connection to the Titanic. We're on the promenade deck right now. Actually, the second glass promenade. And these windows would have been just like this on the Titanic. These are the famous windows that you would have seen on any deck where it's enclosed. Where along the promenade deck it has the open space and then they enclosed it because of weather and vibrations and all sorts of reasons as to why they enclosed part of A deck. But what's cool is you can still see the socket right here. And you can see the glass pane. And you can see how it slides down. This one doesn't move anymore. but. Just like on the Titanic, it would have. Now, during the sinking of the Titanic, Officer Lightoller took Lifeboat 4, which was one of the very first lifeboats ready to be launched from the Titanic. He got it swung out, he lowered it down to A deck because the lifeboats were designed to be launched from A deck. And then he told a bunch of sailors to take a group of passengers down there and open the windows and put them through. And then he went off and he launched like five or six other lifeboats aft on the ship. So. He comes back late in the sinking, like 20 minutes before the ship disappears. He looks over the side and he sees lifeboat four, which should have been the first lifeboat to leave the Titanic, still sitting there outside A deck. And he has this moment of like, what the heck? Why is it still there? So he goes rushing down to A deck promenade and he talks to the sailors and they couldn't find the crank to unscrew the windows and open them up. So that lifeboat was just sitting there with a crowd of people waiting for like an hour. They go off, they find the crank, they crank it, I don't know if it would have been clockwise or counterclockwise, but they crank it open, the window cranks down, and then Light Taller himself, along with the other sailors, they put deck chairs, because the ship's leaning, they use deck chairs as bridges, going out to the lifeboat, which is like a, a good couple feet away now, 
and they go climbing out these windows, which probably would have been a little bit bigger on the Titanic. They go climbing up and out, and water's like 10 feet below them, unlike right now where it's like 50 feet down. They launch it, and it's one of the last lifeboats to leave. Uh, Madeline Astor and a couple of others who are, are not coming to me right now, but they got off through this, and this is where John Jacob Astor, the richest man on the ship, and one of the richest men in the world, asked Lightoller, may I accompany my wife? She's, she's like nine months pregnant. And Lightoller said no. Uh, he handed her a pair of gloves, said I'll see you in New York, and she asked him to go find their dog, which was being kept in the kennel, and he actually did go and find the dog and release the dogs. So that's what these windows would have been like, almost identical. So this is another reason why the Queen Mary is able to give us historical information, help us get the Titanic right. There's always been a little neat feature of the Titanic that I've noticed or that, that's there that's not easily known if you just look at it at a glance. A lot of you guys will know it, but I like how the second class promenade goes along the sides of the Titanic to a certain point around the second class stairs and then it actually cuts across the ship between interior rooms, but it's exterior. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of like this, this neat mesh of interior and exterior that you don't usually see. It's almost like a little maze or a tunnel of exterior. I thought that was neat. Well, here we are on the Queen Mary. That's gone, but it had it. It has traces of it still. So here we are, you can see the original interior of that exterior room along the promenade with these windows that I was just talking about. Now they've changed it when they converted it into a hotel. And uh, this is now the second class lounge, which would have been in there originally. Is it the lounge, Eric? The lounge, thank you. Second class lounge would have been in there originally, but they expanded it out to give it a little bit more floor space for like conventions or private events. Um, but on the original ship, this all still would have been exterior promenade, just like you saw out there or you see on the promenade deck upstairs. And if you follow along here, you can still make out a little bit. This was the original wall going and into the exterior bit. And you can still see some of the entrance doors over there, which still exist. You can still see these hints of this being the uh, original second class promenade. But then if you come out here, if you follow me through these doors into the second class stairwell, thank you, good sir. Come out here. Now this would be an interior space, the exterior would be out there. But we're gonna reach right about here. I wanna say at this wall or maybe this, this point, this would have been the exterior connection. It probably would have been quite narrow. But if you come in here, this is unlocked. This is gonna be a little hard to do with the lights. It's a light switch, perfect. And um, you can see the original floor. In fact, you can see the division between the original floor and what would have been the interior. So that's just a pretty neat thing. You can still see the evidence. And if you come across to the opposite side of what is now a hallway, what wouldn't have been back then, you can see more of that floor, and it would have carried right over there to the opposite side of the ship. That still all would have been exterior, and uh, it would have been encased so it wouldn't have gotten wet in the rain or anything like that, but you still would have had that fresh sea air. And one last little bit of evidence, you can't see it on this side, but if you come over to the opposite side of the ship, you can see, you can still see the hint of what the exterior second class entrance would have been on the starboard side. Now the decking is not original, I believe. It's, in, it's a very nice replica though. And this would, have, this would have been exterior as well with this wall and these entrance doors right here. So I love how it's been all made into an interior space but I love how there's still that hint of seeing what it would have been like on the original ship with the exterior uh, promenade deck. It's almost like archeology span really, going through this ship and finding these things. It's pretty cool. Right now we're in the Queen Mary's second class uh, enclosed promenade deck. It's pretty similar to what was on board Olympic Titanic. 
Uh, those ships predate the Queen Mary by about 20 years, but second class was definitely uh, on the agenda for improvement. Um, the nice thing about an enclosed promenade deck is it allows second class passengers to get out and stretch their feet and walk and have a look at the ocean on days that really aren't, uh, really aren't too, too nice, not too pleasant. In some cases you might have uh, deck chairs. Uh, those, by the way, are rented in there by reservation only. Uh, you can't just walk up to a deck chair and claim it for your own. Also right behind me are a set of doors. They're similar to what was on board uh, Olympic and Titanic. These are called luggage embarkation doors. Getting luggage around on board a ship is always a nightmare. And usually what happens is the night before the, uh, the disembarkation, uh, the luggage is gathered in the unused promenade decks and it's sort of used as a queuing area to get the, uh, the luggage off the ship expeditiously and without getting in the way of passengers or provisions that are coming back on board in the other direction. I turned the sun off and I turned it on. <laughs>